My name is Annie, I'm known as Maker Fishmail on the internet, and I wrote a book. The book is the ultimate glue guide. It's about glue, how to use them, how to be safe with them, how to clean them up. I think it's a really cool book. I learned a lot um, while making it, and I hope you like it. I wanted to talk today about my favorite kind of glue, which is contact cement. There are different kinds of contact cement. You might know it as E6000 or Goop, but my favorite kind is Dap Weldwood. Um, comes in a can. You can also get it in little containers like this if you don't go through the ridiculous amount that I do. But I buy it by the quart and then transfer it to smaller containers so it doesn't go bad as quickly. One cool thing about contact cement is that it is extremely good at adhering a lot of materials and very good to moderately good at adhering most other materials. So it's a very versatile adhesive and um, it's very, very strong. We can't talk about contact cement though without talking about safety. Contact cement is very toxic for your lungs and your brain. So when you use it, you have to use it in a well-ventilated area and you must wear a face mask. These filters right here are specifically for vapors. You don't want to use the ones that are flat and round. Those ones are just for particulates. You can use different materials to apply contact cement, um, Q-tips, scrap pieces of EVA foam, but my favorite is actually silicone makeup brushes like this. I have two packs that I bought from Amazon. You can see this is an older one that I have beat the heck out of, but it's still going. One of the really nice things about silicone brushes is that you can actually peel the contact cement off um, and it becomes a clean new silicone brush. It's so satisfying. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Contact cement is particularly good for cosplayers because it works so well on EVA foam. So if you are an armorsmith, um, even if you're just getting started in making armor, foam smithing, if you have a way to safely use contact cement, I recommend you actually start out with it right away. Contact cement can take a little bit of practice to get to the point where you're really comfortable and really getting the best results. That's because you have to actually let the contact cement gas off before you connect the pieces that you're trying to use the contact cement on. So the way that you use it is, say I'm trying to connect these two pieces of EVA foam. I would take my silicone brush or whatever, get contact cement on it, brush on the contact cement, very thin layer, brush the contact cement on the other piece. So now you have two pieces that have contact cement on them. At that point you let them sit, let them dry, it's a hard wait sometimes, and sometimes you go too far, and sometimes you don't let it dry enough, and that's just part of the learning process. When they're ready, it'll be very, very slightly tacky, but it won't have much sheen to it anymore. At that point, you press the objects together and apply some pressure, and they're stuck together. Like I said, it does take some practice to get to the point where you know where that perfect tackiness level is, but I think that practice is very, very, very worth it, especially if you're making props or armor for cosplay. I actually really like to use contact cement to support sewing as well. Might be controversial, but I think glue has its place in a sewist's arsenal. I especially like it when I'm working with thicker pleather, like upholstery pleather, like this. You can use contact cement to adhere this kind of pleather to lots of different materials. Of course, I like to use it to adhere it to foam. This vest here was entirely made by making a base out of EVA foam and then gluing the pleather on top of it. Contact cement works perfectly for that and you end up with a very smooth, uh, seamless garment. If you have a sewing machine that can't deal with uh, a thicker fabric like this, or if you are a hand sewer and your fingers can't deal with it, then contact cement can even be used to create um, seams and hems. Contact cement is for leather working, so in my opinion, using it on garments and especially pleather materials is not shameful. <laughs> contact cement isn't great for every material, particularly if you're using insulation foam, which is XPS or EPS foam, 
contact cement will eat through it. It will literally dissolve it. So if you are making a prop like the spatula, for example, with XPS or EPS foam, you will want to seal the foam with something like wood glue before you use contact cement on it. However, once the XPS or EPS foam is sealed within a protective barrier, the contact cement will work quite well. So I personally like to make my props with XPS or EPS foam, seal it with wood glue, and then I can adhere all of my details, all of my cuteness with contact cement once the actual XPS or EPS foam is protected. Similarly, if you're using a thinner fabric, you do want to be a little careful with contact cement. Contact cement works really, really well with this. However, if you go too hard, the contact cement will just seep through and stain the fabric. What I like to do is, number one, do a patch test. Make sure that you understand how much contact cement that fabric can take. If the answer to that is not very much, it's going to be dangerous to use the contact cement on it at all, then I recommend not actually applying the contact cement to the fabric at all. Apply the contact cement to, you know, whatever it is that you're going to glue the fabric to, and then don't let that contact cement set as long as you usually would so that it's going to be a little more wet than usual and then put the fabric on at that time. So the contact cement will be a little stickier than you would usually like for it to be when you adhere things with it, um, but there won't be enough liquid left that the contact cement will run through your fabric and ruin it. I also think that contact cement is really great in combination with other types of adhesives. So on the back of this mask, um, up here, I've attached the fabric for the D-ring to the mask with contact cement, and then I've reinforced that connection point with a piece of gaffer tape. Super easy. Here, I attached the purse snap to a piece of pleather just by using the legs on the purse snap, and then I've used contact cement to adhere the pleather to the EVA foam. And so we have two kind of separate attachment points here, um, both primarily using contact cement and then reinforced with kind of a backup plan for the contact cement. One more thing that I really love about contact cement is that it is sandable once it is fully cured. So if you're making something out of EVA foam like this and you go a little overboard with your glue on your seams, then you can uh, let it sit and then once it's cured, maybe it's been a day or so, you can take your Dremel to it and just sand off all of the excess glue that you have in your seams. So that's it. That's my very favorite glue, contact cement. I love this glue for the beautiful results that it really can get if you are an armorsmith or you're working with um, atypical materials, um, if you're making big props, you're really gonna get beautiful seams that you can actually trust to stay together through a photo shoot or a long convention day. If you are just getting started with foam smithing, with even just with cosplay in general, I really, really recommend that you pick up a small container of this DAP weld wood um, and add it to your arsenal. It's not that expensive, but it's really gonna level up the cosplay that you are creating right away. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something. And if you want to know more, please check out my book. Um, I really like it. It's cute. And it has a lot of really great information in it. Um, and I hope you like it too. Bye.